Hello and welcome to the Student Council Podcast, an educational advice show made for students and by students, where everyone is qualified to talk about their own experiences. My name is Carter Dvorak, and I am very, very hyped to have the roommate episode after all this time, after we moved out and didn't do this in person, which I probably should have been better on getting the ball on, but it's fine. Anyways, I'm here, and I'm very excited to be joined by my roommates, Majid Shabir. Majid, you're on the podcast. Thank you for being on today. How are you doing? How's your summer going? Thank you for having me, Carter. I'm doing well. Yeah, just enjoying the first first week of summer, missing Michigan, but glad to yeah. be home as well. It is feeling very much like that. There's a big old balance between missing, missing school and friends and everything, and also, like, it's good to be back and enjoy the nice weather and be back home. Although, I feel like, I don't know if you've experienced this, we got out so early this year that I feel like I am, like, no other friend that I know from college is out right now, so I'm just kind of, like, twiddling my thumbs until my other people like get out of school did you like did anybody else that you know get out before we did or was it just like no no one yeah. i knew from anywhere got out before we did um i think most people are getting out in like early june or in a week yeah um, most usc moves out in a week so i'm gonna have some friends coming back but yeah no no one before michigan no that and i think this will be the only summer where that happens too because we're i guess we're getting pushed back by a week next year but nothing major anyways what has been your favorite five minutes of the past week um i feel like the first five minutes coming home and then having my dogs just go ballistic yeah um my older dog is kind of more mature at this point she'll kind of jump on me a little bit and then you know go on her belly get her up my younger dog will just begin bouncing off the walls for 30 years um so definitely that uh just having to you know, see them after a couple of months um, and them just being so happy, um, you know, huge. Yeah, always good when that happens. Definitely like, you know, dogs are always a huge mood booster. So say that. They are. Uh, welcome to our favorite segment of the show called Name the Dogs, where you need to name your dogs, please. Uh, okay, so the older one is Kima. She is a Labrador Poodle mix. And then the younger one is Alu, also a Labrador Poodle mix. They're actually stepsisters, same dad, different mom. Okay. Uh, and they are both absolutely crazy nice did you yeah because they they look very similar did you procure them together or was it like did you get one and then adopt the stepsister later yeah so we got kima she's i think like five years older than ali so we had kima for five years and we're like you know i feel like you would do kima good to have like a playmate uh, and also we kind of want another dog so then Mm -hmm. we went back to the same breeder and we got alu nice that's very cute now, moving on from dogs to school. Anyways, how was your first year of college? I feel like we've done a whole year's worth of school, which still feels a little bit weird to think about. I feel like being home, I'm almost back in this mindset of like, I'm gearing up for my first year of college again. But like, it came and it went and it conquered. So how was your first year of school? How are you kind of reflecting on that now being back? And just what was your general gist of it all? I'd say it went well. Uh, you know, there are always things looking back you could have done better. Uh, but I feel like for the most part, you know, classes weren't too crazy. The college experience in general wasn't, didn't have as many unexpecteds as I, as I, you know, had conceived going in. Um, and, you know, socially, academically, I feel like for the most part, things were pretty smooth. Obviously, you know, freshman year is the time to explore. So, you know, I did make some decisions that I had to go back on and like, you know, things maybe I shouldn't have done as intensely and whatnot. But I feel like in general, freshman year, uh, you know, it, it was a good vibe and I feel I feel well prepared for sophomore year. So, yeah. Nice. I'm going to bounce around the, the questions a little bit and get to something I would have asked you later in the episode. But you talked about less unexpected going into it. I love asking people, like, what were generally your expectations going into school? So, like, what were you kind of thinking of when you first came to school? Like, what were you expecting? Um, well, I had the I was lucky enough that I was in a summer program that kind of previewed college for me before it started. Um, so I feel like my first shock and awe with what college would be like was kind of in the summer. Um, I feel like the official welcome week wasn't as wasn't as jarring to me because I'd been through that. But uh, the the biggest shock to me in college was just kind of how relaxed everyone was. <laughs> uh, r- relaxed as in like willing to kind of do whatever. Um, yeah. it, especially like on the weekends or in free time, people are just doing the craziest things. Uh, so I, I feel like that was the biggest shock because I, I was kind of going into the expectation like, oh, you know, everyone is going to be super, super, not necessarily focused, but super, super, like only 
considering their classes and their extracurriculars as like major, major, you know, parts of what they want to pursue. Um, but then you go to college and everyone's just like, oh yeah, you know, we have classes, but we can also do this instead. Um, so I feel like that was the biggest shock. Um, and like, especially adapting from high school when everyone is like always grinding for college applications and always grinding the extracurriculars, seeing just how free form people were in college was the biggest shock. But I, I feel like, I feel like if you're disciplined enough, like you can get over it pretty quickly. 10,000%, but that is really, that's I think an interesting thing in particular coming to you, Mitch, because like, I think there are some schools where like you very much know it's going to be free form when you go. Like I talked to somebody from like Arizona State University and he's basically like, yeah, no, it's a party school. And like, we know this and everybody knows this. And so like, you can kind of know what you're getting into. And I feel like there's some schools where like, you probably know that like academics is going to be more expected. And Michigan is this weird like in between where like, it's both like a very challenge, like it's a school that has like a pretty heavy emphasis on like academics and research. And you can just bury your way into that and never really ever pop out. And there's like on the equal opposite end of the spectrum is like there's a strong like active extra like a football culture and a, and a kind of a party culture and like an event culture, too, which is just kind of cool. To, it's interesting to see that balance for sure. And I, and think I was I, surprised I, at that, too. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it was a bad thing. I think it was oh. like a pleasant surprise because, you know, it, it does provide, you know, a, a good balance where on one hand, yes, you are very academically inclined and very committed, but you always have kind of this community to back you up. And if you do want to, you know, go to a football game and kind of, you know, let yourself out, you can. So I, I feel like both the academic and social sides complement each other. And I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't, you know, change Michigan to be a party school completely or or change it to be completely, you know, you know, 100% you need to get A's in all your class. Like, I feel like the middle ground is really the best place to be. I 10,000% agree. I love it very, very much in that sense and that it's a great balance of the two. Remind me, you, did you get football tickets or no? Um, so I didn't opt to go for the season ticket. Um, usually I got, you know, individual based tickets um, just because I don't want to deal with the hassle of <laughs> selling my tickets each time. Yeah. Um, I'd rather just, you know, pay for the one or two games that I go to um, because, yeah, I don't probably not going to go to more than two or three games. That's fair. We need to go to a game next year, though. I'm going to put that in the books now. That would be very, very fun. Now remind i i know what you're studying but for the audience at sake what are you studying and i gotta ask how's that double major life going and i think when something generally with double majors that i was always kind of heard and told us like that'll be five years but i know you're gunning for it in four so i'm just curious how's that going was that a lot of like build up i guess also how long did you plan to kind of go into these majors and degrees yeah so i'm doing a dual degree in political science and business um I am planning on finishing in four years. I am on track to finish in four years so far. Um, it it really hasn't been as difficult as as I thought it would be and as people told me it would be. Um, it, it is a little bit more difficult credit and scheduling wise doing one major in Ross and one in the LSA. Um, that being said, if you just are really careful with the classes you pick um, and you know, have the right combo of AP classes coming in, there's really not too much difficulty in graduating in four years. So um, currently, you know, it is true. I'm taking like the, I did take, you know, full maximum credits freshman year, but I didn't need to. I think I could have gotten away with 16 credits per semester and still graduated in four years. Um, so it, it's really not that bad. Um, and yeah, I, I am planning on finishing in four years. I think it's a it's a good experience to have. You could meet a lot of people from different backgrounds, different classes, but um, it is a little bit more work, but I'm glad I did. I, I think it's well worth it. Nice. And, and I think, too, something to note is, like, even doing max out classes or kind of really gunning on things like academics and doing a lot of courses doesn't mean that you can't not take fun courses. Like, you know, I feel like I had my, I've talked to before, my first year writing requirement was a class where I just literally got to go and see plays every week or every other week, which was rad, or like musical performances in Ann Arbor. I know you were in a biology of Middle Earth class to like fulfill some science credits. So like, it's kind of, it's nice too that there's a couple bonkers courses out there to take. Exactly. Like e each credit you take isn't going to be just more work. Sometimes you just go to class, have a good time. And, and as long as you participate, you're fine. And you will learn a lot in that class, but it's not work. So yeah, no, the, the myth behind like taking 18 credits, you're going to be swamped the entire semester. Like 
No, maybe if you take 18 credits worth of economics and science courses, you might be. But if you take 18 credits of, you know, fun electives and poli sci and business classes, right, it's not going to be as bad. Yeah. How are you prepping for risk um, when it comes to poli sci and business? Like, have you thought about that at all? That's first semester junior year, right? Yeah. By that point, I feel like hopefully recruiting will be done. Um, <clears throat> I'm planning on trying to go abroad this summer of my sophomore year. So I'm pl really planning on getting all of my big, you know, uh, academic necessities out of the way before res is done. Um, but as far as the semester itself goes, I'm not too worried. I think like 90% of your schedule is already pre-booked by Ross. So there's not much you have to do on your own. Yeah. Um, kind of looking forward to it as well. You get to like spend time with all your friends, spend time with the people you know, um, kind of really, really for better or for worse, become part of that Ross culture. Um, so again, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I can't imagine it'll be, uh, you know, very much different in terms of course load, but just being in Ross 24 uh, seven seems, seems kind of fun. It does. It's a good building to spend a lot of time in. And I think that I'm glad that they renovated it to be as such. Um, also, you're in a banger uh, section too, like in Ross. Like, I feel like the because you're section one and that's with like you and bryant and a bunch of other people that i feel like we both know so that'd be fun too to like be in it with a bunch of people that we're aware of yes you suffer together yeah. uh you suffer together is all i'll say <laughs> anyways roommates we're roommates we did that together i guess i'm curious um because tech like I feel like it's weird to say like I went in blind because like we went in blind out of a pool of 30 people with the same major because we were all in the same housing community. So I'm really curious too, what led you to applying to living business and like how did that kind of affect your housing plans? Like let's say, had you not done living business, would you have searched for a roommate? Did you kind of have somebody in the back of your head or were you like, I want to go in blind regardless and I just kind of want to go in blind with somebody with the same major? I applied to two living communities. One was living business and the others was the other was the community scholars program. Okay. Uh, the only reason I applied to both of them was because they were in West Quad and I really, really, really wanted West Quad housing. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know that living business was as small as it as it was. I didn't know it was just like 30 kids who you already are going to have classes with like half of them. That aspect was completely lost in me. I was just thinking, okay, West Quad, I need to be in West Quad, I need to be on Central Campus, so I applied. Um, and then going in, I'm like, oh, there are a lot of people I know here, and every I have a lot of the same classes with these people. Um, so yeah, that was really good. Um, as far as going in blind roommate-wise, um, yeah, that was always a plan. I was like, you know what, I could, you know, maybe coordinate with a friend and see, you know, see what comes of it, but um, do I want to room with somebody from high school who I already know really well, or do I want to kind of get to know somebody else and, you know, uh, bond more with a new a new group of friends um, and so I was like you know what? I'll go for that right and um, maybe if I hadn't been in living business and going in blind I would have been more worried but I'm like if somebody has the uh, has the know-how to apply to a theme community and is able to get into living business I feel like having a random roommate isn't going to be too much of a risk uh, because you know everyone kind of is coming in with the same goals um, and yeah I think it it worked out pretty well. I, I would 10,000% agree that it worked out very well. And I, I also agree with the sense of, like, I feel like going in blind in a theme community definitely made me feel a lot better than, like, going in blind straight. Also knowing where you're going to live and knowing that it's West Quad is, is a good thing to have. It's a feather in your cap that I was very happy to have. But had you roomed with people before, like, in school or anything else? I know you also, you also have a sibling, but, like, rooming with other people experience, what was that for you? So I've done it quite a lot. So from sixth grade onward, my troop would go camping like once a month and we would always have to tent with another person for a few days. So I guess it's not really the same, but freshman year, I came to Michigan for a debate program. I had to room with somebody for four weeks. And then in the summer again, um, I had to room with someone uh, for, I think that was six weeks. So I've had like a lot of, a lot of uh, time rooming with someone. I, I feel like that's a double-edged sword because on one hand, like, you know, I'm used to living with people, but on the other hand, I feel like I've gotten very comfortable living with people. So like, sometimes I'll just be very comfortable and the other person's like, oh, you are really, you know, moving into this really quickly. Um, <laughs> and I'm a, a little more time to acclimate. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like even, even if I had gotten a roommate who I 
didn't you know get along with or didn't share any values with i feel like i still would have been fine like just living in the room um as far as like roommate life goes yeah it's never been a problem just like you know not getting on each other's nerves in our case we got pretty lucky like we got along i, I feel yeah. like we got along pretty well uh yeah, <laughs> there's really a concern um but no yeah I, roommate life has never really been too too crazy for me no it was like uncanny the way how similar we were and the fact that we got rooms together like every once in a while i'm like was this intentional because like, i feel like more than anybody else in living business we were like aligned right we're like that was just kind of cool and, and i'm so always so grateful and very lucky for that because that was like really really fun to just like vibe and i feel like i came at this with like almost next to no like rooming with other person experiences except for when i'd go and like visit a friend over the summer after i kind of like moved away where like i'd have people and we'd stay together but like i feel like yeah we both just got along really well i think like the little like ask your roommate these questions sheet that we had to fill out maybe helped as well like a teeny bit just bring up some stuff but even still like i just think that we were like so similar enough that we didn't even have to like figure out or lay any ground rules like we were just kind of on similar wavelengths there was a universal blessing with us getting paired and also with us getting that room that was just in the perfect spot had the perfect door had the debate flow just kind of sitting in the garbage can yeah yeah, there, there was some some alignment of powers that just came together and are like, we are going to do this. Yeah, this is going to happen. No, it was like peak room. It was three closets, like triple tr- a triple sized room for two people. Like, I feel like that will forever be the best like dorm situation that could have ever happened. So yeah. that was rad. And I am always grateful to have you had you as a roommate. So you as well. You as well. Thank you. Now, I want to jump into a couple of other extracurriculars that you were involved in because they seem really cool and just to kind of share them on the show for anybody who's interested. The first one I was Europe Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program. Is that the yes. acronym? Nice. Um, so Europe Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program. I guess I'm curious. Like, I know Michigan's such a big research school, but I also feel like, um, yeah, such a big research school. And so I'm curious, like, what attracted you to that research element of it? What did Europe, like, look like what you were doing there and kind of how did that go so there's a very big difference between i guess stem research and then poli sci research um not to say one is better than the other but when people say michigan is a very big research school they are typically referring to kind of the labs michigan has um so if you are doing stem i would like ten thousand percent recommend europe um it is the best thing you can do as like a pre-med major or a bio major or a CS major, like 100% do your op because you are going to be working with a professor in a lab on a project. Um, and more, if you do well, like you will work through that for four years. On the poli sci humanities side, Michigan is also a very big poli sci school, but people typically don't really associate the research portion of the school with that. Um, so the work I was doing was more kind of writing based and like field work based it it wasn't necessarily like being in a lab surveying people or things like that um that being said it was still 100 like would do it again um very very fun um you the 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 value in doing europe isn't that you can say oh i'm in europe and i got four credits worth of you know you know classes the value in doing europe is that you can be in a, a project that gives you like valuable skills and that you can like continue to work with over the summer and through the four years. Um, So there were, you know, worksheets you had to fill out for Europe. There were seminars you had to attend. All of that is kind of secondary because the real meaningful work you're doing is independent of the credits and is kind of just what the professor wants you to be doing. Um, So yeah, it it was definitely worth it. Um, A good balance of kind of that academic uh, checkbox that, okay, you know, attend this class, blah, 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 attend this lecture. Um, but the real work you're doing is in the lab with the professor um, on your own pace. Nice. And then are you continuing that program like through the summer and beyond into next year? Or is it kind of more like a one year, one and done thing? So there is an extension of Europe you can apply for called the Research Scholars Program. If if you, you know, really liked Europe, really liked the uh really like the structure of the program and how they had you do research, you can apply. Personally, I'm not going to be applying just because I was given the opportunity to continue doing the research without necessarily being part of an academic program. 
Um, the other benefit of doing that is that you also have two additional credits per semester that are free, uh, that are now free. Uh, so what uh, my plan is, what I'm doing right now is just working with the professor independently, um, working with the department independently, still doing the same research I was doing before, um, but not officially as part of your op. Okay, very cool. That'll be, that's exciting to kind of do. And it's nice to have those free credits. I know that that's a, it's a valuable thing when it comes to college and scheduling. Now, I'm always really excited to talk to you about Michigan Mock Trial because it seems like it's it was a big core a part of your activities, at least from what I could tell during this first year of school. It just seems like a very, very cool team. You guys were third in your district in the national championship, so congratulations. I am curious what led you to Mock Trial. How did that kind of just affect your first year experiences overall, and like, what did it take to earn that title as a Mock Trial team? Yeah, so what as far as what led me to Mock Trial, I remember after Festival when – all the freshman business majors were networking, quote unquote, networking to get into the consulting clubs and the finance clubs and the business frats, right? Everyone was just there going table to table, collecting all the QR codes, collecting all the stickers, talking to all the upperclassmen. So at that point, I did not know mock trial existed whatsoever. I walked by their table at festival. I don't even think I gave them a second look. Um, and then I got back to the room and you were there and you were like, hey, I saw this mock trial table. They're having a seminar later on. You should, that seems like something you'd be interested in. I'm like, you know what? Okay, why not? Carter thinks I should do it. Let me go do it. Um, so then I went and they had a seminar in the union. So this is after festival was over. I'm like, okay, let me go here. What the heck? You know, let me just apply, you know, what, what's the worst that could happen? Um, so then I applied and I got in and I'm like, wow, I really like this. Oh my God. I got in kind of off of a fluke because Carter just kind of mentioned it in a passing comment, like, hey, mock trial's doing a thing, you should go. And I'm like, oh, wow, what a coincidence. Um, so yeah, I joined mock trial really, really just on the whim. It wasn't it wasn't a plan. It was just like, oh, wow, I guess I'm in mock trial now. Um, but no, 100% worth it. Uh, a pretty sizable time commitment, but you really get so much more out of it. Um, so 100% recommend mock trial to anyone um, regardless of your interest, it's a great, great group of people, great program, uh, super, super fun to do. That's amazing. I laughed only because I, until you said it, because you, you wrote it, you wrote it in a very, very heartfelt card that I was very, very happy to have. But you said it there, and I was like, I have no memory of this at all, which is really funny to me. I think now, I, now that you said that story, I'm like, I think I do remember this, because I think I remember either following or seeing Michigan Mock Trial, and maybe they followed, like, Somehow I had heard about them, but I didn't know that that was the impetus for you joining Mock Trial, but that's very, very cool. Yeah. Such a sleigh. Um, <laughs> gotta, gotta put that in there every once in a while. Now, I've got a couple questions on here that I love to ask everybody on the show. And the first one is, what is the most impactful piece of advice that somebody has given to you? Ooh. Um... Most impactful piece of advice I've received ever was from one of my uh, one of my like senior scouts in my scout troop. I don't remember how many years ago this was, but they were just like, respect your elders. I mean, they didn't say it like that, but they were like, you know, you, you, the, those who have, have like more experience than you or who are older than you really know what they're talking about, even if you disagree with it, always give kind of some you know, some value to whatever they say. Um, and like, I, I feel like as I've gotten older, I've found think found myself thinking like, wow, you know, I'm telling those younger than me really, really meaningful advice. And I'm watching them make the same mistakes that I did in trying to do their own thing. Um, so since then, I'm like, okay, I'm really, really, really gonna follow what, you know, those above me have to say. And I feel like in college, that has been really, really helpful uh, more so than like in high school or ever, because the upperclassmen really know what they're doing. Um, and that's kind of necessary in a business setting. Like you kind of have to make this connection. So yeah, definitely that moment where I was like, wow, these people know what they're talking about. That is really smart. And that is, I like the, the framing and the way that you talked about that piece of advice, because it's like, it, you hear it a lot, but I really like the way that you described it. Cause it is true that sometimes so many times, there is like a piece of advice out there that somebody who has gone through this experience has learned and is like, Hey, you should understand this. And I'm like, no, let me figure it out for myself. And I'm like, Oh, I made a bunch of stupid mistakes. I didn't have to make to get to the same thing. And so that is really cool. And I think that 
Yeah, especially the disparity of first year to of college to final year of college student. Like, they've gone through a lot, and so it is cool to, like, talk to them and learn about that stuff. And so if you're listening to this and you're a high school senior, respect your elders. Listen to what we have to say. And the sad thing is, they're going to be thinking when they hear that, aha, I can figure it out on my own. And then they're going to be a freshman in college, and they're going to be like, damn, I should have listened. And you know what? I guess that's part of growing up, but that's just the advice we have to share. It is the advice you have to share. Um, yes. Now, what is an ultimate tip for somebody who is specifically maybe going into college? Ooh. Um, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate tip is to fix your sleep schedule. <laughs> Carter, you can speak to this for me personally. Um, but yes, that is highly, highly, highly important. Yes, there are days when you're going to have to pull an all-nighter. That's unavoidable. But fix your sleep schedule. Like, that is so important. Um, yeah, like, I don't think, I feel like in high school, you you don't appreciate just how much work your body does throughout the day. And in college, when you are responsible for just your own upkeep, you really, really learn to value, like, the eight hours of sleep. And you'll also notice that you can no longer function properly unless you get this eight hours of sleep. Like your work will decrease in quality. So fix those sleep schedules. It's a very, very good piece of advice. 10,000%. I, I agree. Even like that was kind of why I will always schedule early classes for myself. Like when I can, like it's why I don't complain about early classes because I'm like, all right, cool. I know that this is here and now. And it's like the right amount of like pressure. And like, I know how there's that, there's a saying and stuff where it's like, you know, sometimes, like, you need to be put in a box to, like, get more, cre- like, creativity sometimes does come from pressure, and I feel like 8, 8 a.m. or 8.30s for me is, like, the perfect amount of pressure to be, like, I can orient everything else around this, and for the most part, that'll be okay. Yep. Yeah, but that is, it's a good piece of advice. And 8.30 like classes. Oh, sorry? Oh, no. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was saying 8.30 classes are, are a blessing in disguise. You'll hate them, but after a few weeks, you will appreciate them. Speaking of rooms and roommates and things, I'm curious uh, to hear your take on what is a dorm room essential item. Ooh. Um. I say the base essential. Well, uh, well, the base item I-, I think you need are like maybe a like a mirror. <laughs> yeah, I say a mirror just because when you get up in the morning and you're combing your hair, like sometimes, like you just want to see okay this is how it looks let me change and also for changing like it, it's helpful like okay this outfit doesn't really work i'd say that, like from a more structural standpoint you should always have like two backup sets of toothpaste shampoo and soap because you are always gonna like end up leaving one in the shower and then it's gonna go missing so you should always have like two backups like two full bottles of backup because you're going to lose one and then you're going to be like, oh my God, I only have two left. And then if you make one more mistake, you still have one more and you can just restock. So I always have three sets of like comb, not combs, but like shampoo, soap, uh, hand sanitizer, all those kind of toothpaste, all those kind of things that you use have like three sets of those because you're going to end up losing some. It is. A, that's a really smart point because I remember I really appreciated. I ended up like midway through the year, I bought like soap in bulk from like Amazon and it was amazing to just have like six tubes and I'm like soap for days because you're gonna use it like it's never gonna go bad there's no expiration date but I really love that piece of advice um 10,000% what is the best dining hall on campus I love asking the image people this because I feel like there's I've gotten so many answers it's all very interesting uh I'm gonna go with North Quad North Quad is by far the best dining hall um well here's the thing if you're talking about the quality of food yes north quad the problem with north quad is that it can't fit that many people but yeah. quality of food north quad so if you can go to north quad go to north quad if you're talking about like you kind of are in ross and you kind of just want to grab a quick bite go to east quad and i also think that they have the best desserts but they still don't have as good food as north quad. But dessert wise yeah i think they have better ice cream um then you have South Quad. South Quad is kind of all reliable. You know, they have their ups and downs, but you'll always like get a meal there. Um, they're never going to be like, uh, you know, I can't eat anything here. There's always something to eat in South Quad. 
Um, and also they're close close by to most things. So, you know, in between classes, you can go to Super Court. Um, then you have Bursley Bates, the, the North Campus standing halls. Um, I went there once and the food was actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, but um, I've heard really horror stories about them. Um, and also they're just far away from everything. So I'm gonna yeah. put them on. Yeah, no, Bursley Bates and Markley are the only dining halls I haven't been to before. Um, I was initially going to be like, North Quad's kind of blasphemous, but also, like, I hear you now. Like, the more I'm thinking about it, because I had classes in the MLB, those are my 830s were in MLB or yep. North Quad, like, in the mornings, and so I'd go to North Quad for breakfast, and it was, like, low-key not that bad. Especially because, like, I liked how all the breakfast stuff was, like, open... Like, you could self-serve, which was nice. Because I feel like it's sometimes, like, there'll be a super long line for, like, the single, like, breakfast station. And then it's like, well, this is something. Whereas, like, otherwise I can just go scoop my little eggs out, endure my little eggs, and then move on from there. That is a a good point. I never actually went to North Quad for breakfast. I would only go for lunch or dinner. Because my classes on North Quad were in the evening. Um, So I I can't speak to their breakfast. But I can't imagine, like, a major drop-off in quality. Um, it's really not like the fact that their like eggs were like reliably edible is actually it's a high praise for for reliably edible <laughs> uh because college eggs are something else man and and again like i'm not somebody who is like a dining hall hater because the fact that like they reliably serve like ten thousand people a day or whatever is incredibly remarkable and like that's a feat and so i'm not ever somebody who's like man why are the dining halls like not you know gourmet and i'm like i get it like i get that you have to serve a lot of people and so like to have a good eggs from the dining hall is is a good thing yep so moving from that what is a moment from high school that you still think about i mean they're obviously all the you know all the time you spend with your friends outside of like the academic setting in high school but i feel like in class um hmm I don't know like there there are a lot of moments you think about in high school because like you have a lot of memories from high school right you're not gonna mm-hmm. forget this very um yeah I feel like the one I, I think about most in college probably I guess oh probably one like we I heard back from Michigan I feel like uh, yeah. we were in the middle of of our calc class um and everyone got their like Michigan notifications at the same time um and the the official rule that the high school our high school had was okay you shouldn't open college applications in like front of other people you should wait till after class you're not distracted but we had a super chill teacher so he's like oh yeah everyone just opened them anyway um and remarkably like I think like of the 15 people who in in that class who had like applied I think like 13 got in and then two had gotten waitlisted or deferred um I yeah probably waitlisted because I don't think Michigan had early but uh and and those two people who had gotten deferred had already like committed somewhere else anyway so it was like a really really positive mood in that whole class everyone was kind of ecstatic and then he straight up was like okay congratulations everyone I know we're not going to get anything else done in class so you all are dismissed early and this was like 20 minutes into a hour and a half period so we had the rest of the day to just like kick back and relax Uh, so that was really really fun time that's awesome. That's like remarkably similar to mine. I was also final hour calc, like yeah, early in the class or like midway through because our scheduling was different. But yeah, I remember like the girl across from me like looks at me and goes like, "You just came out," and I'm sitting front row directly in front of the teacher in like a class where there's not meant to be computers, and I'm just like, "Well," and I whip out my computer and I just open it up in front of her, and like again, she's an amazing chill teacher and said absolutely nothing about it. And it was just cool to open it up and see the confetti. It's a good time. Oh, the confetti. Uh, always a good feeling. The confetti. Now, uh, I'm building a school survival playlist from everybody on the show. And I'm curious, what song got you through a period of school? What would you put on the playlist? Oh, oh my God. Okay, disclaimer. Michigan really destroys your taste in music. Like, I've heard Taylor Swift being blasted from every classroom, from every playlist. There's like nothing against Taylor Swift, but I, oh my God, there's just so much Taylor Swift. Um, 
So if you if you really want the Michigan experience, just make a full Taylor Swift playlist. Um, everyone has one eventually. Even the biggest Taylor Swift haters will come to Michigan, then get just swarmed, and then we'll have a Taylor Swift playlist. Um, as far as like a survival song goes, um, do um. The song has gone more viral recently, but uh, what's it? Uh, I think I'm Only Human by Rag and Bone Man. Um, all the memes have kind of kind of soured it, in my opinion. But if you're like in the middle of an assignment, it's kind of four in the morning and like you're kind of just down, just play that song. And then it won't cheer you up because it's that type of song, but you'll kind of just keep working afterwards. So I would add that. I uh, It is added now. That's very funny. I love the, the Taylor Swift comment is, it, I mean, it's true, 10,000%. People are into that. I, I know that Columbia teaches a Taylor Swift course. Wow. The final question of the episode is, what would you tell your freshman self in high school and the first year self in college? The advice would probably be the same, which I think is very telling. Um, I, I feel like the advice to both would be, um, if you need to get something done, like if you want to practice piano or you want to study or you have a meeting to go to, if, if you need to get an- anything done, always involve somebody else to hold you accountable. Um, you should never hold your, like you should try to hold yourself accountable, but you should never rely on it. Because when you wake up and are sitting in bed, you never know what decision you're going to make. Um, but you can always count on other people to hold you accountable. Um, so, you know, if you, you know, need to study for a test, right, like make sure you have a study buddy, or if you need to practice piano, make sure you have like, you know, your piano teacher hop on a zoom call and like, make sure you at least start and then they can leave afterward. Always some form of external accountability, because no matter how committed you are at one point in time, You never know in like two hours when you are, you know, out with a bunch of friends and it's past when you should be back and you don't want to go back. So always, always have that external accountability um, because it'll help you out so much in terms of getting things done. That's a really good piece of advice that I 10,000% ascribe to is external accountability, a study buddy, just somebody to like be there is always super nice for me. I think the only other way I can get around that is some level of challenge like the only way i can get eternally accountable is if i have some level of like checklist or challenge or like things i'm like okay i need to do this to keep this goal going so that i can you know reach a certain end but everything else yeah i need another person that's why i can get up in the mornings it's like it's why i sleep in when there's nobody else around but when i'm with other people i'm like i could be up at 7 30 in the morning and like go into jazz band because i know there's gonna be people there but if i was like alone you can pay me to get up at 7 a.m. and get on a drum set and practice jazz. I was going to say, like, the, 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 what, what I've noticed is that, like, what the most productive days, or, like, the most productive days I've seen people have in college, they're always, like, going from one meeting to the next. And by the end of the day, they're exhausted, but they're like, wow, I got so much done. But I've never seen somebody be, who's like, yeah, you know, I was, had nothing to do today, and I just got so much done. Like, sure, that happens once in a blue moon, but, like, consistently, you cannot pull it off. No, it's tough. I wish I could, man, but yeah. it's okay. Now, the final, final question, the secretly final question is, do you have anything to plug or share or promote or anything else like that? Um, uh, well, I know this super, super great podcast is called The Student Council. It's run by my roommate. Um, really, really awesome podcast. Would not recommend it anymore. It's a top 10, top one podcast, really. Um, if you ha- want, you know, to survive in college or just in life, 10,000% recommend it. Um, great, great host as well. So uh, 100% give it, give it, give it a look. That, I'm going to make that into a trailer, if that's fine. I'm just going to steal that clip and put it out on all the, all the grams. Because that's the, the Majid seal of approval is a very special and very coveted seal of approval. And oh, I'm very you. grateful for that. Thank you very much. I... Very much appreciate it. Now, 
that brings us to the end of this very fun interview thank you for coming on it's always a joy to get to catch up and see you because we're not thank always you for having me in the same room anymore to my knowledge at least um oh so. <laughs> actually uh, carter if you look in your closet um uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh but thank you very much do you have any other final parting words for the show I, I don't think so. I think, yeah, I, I, thank you for the interview. Thank you for the question. It's very fun to answer. And yeah, uh, I will probably talk to you over the summer, but have a great summer. As do you. Have a great summer. We, we, we shall talk at some point over some means of communication, whether it's a Minecraft server or otherwise. But until then, I've been Carter Dvorak. That over there has been Majid Shabir. If you want to find the show, our Instagram is at StukoPod. Our email is StukoPod at gmail.com. Anyways, wish you the best of luck and the best of times in all your educational endeavors. The student council is adjourned.